There's something satisfyingly simple about the ingredients that go into making most beers. Take today's beer, for example, Belgian wit. It's simply a case of using water and malt and yeast and hops and chamomile and candy sugar and sweet orange peel and paradise seed. Yeah, simple. Hello, my name is Martin Keane. I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And as I'm working my way down the BJCP guidelines, I've reached a new category, category 24, Belgian ale. Like one of my favorite categories. This is going to be a wonderful few weeks. And we're starting today with Belgian wit. So let's get this guy mashed in. Oh, as usual, I've got my grist already measured out, milled, all done for me by Atlantic Brew Supply. Thanks guys. And there is a fair amount of wheat malt here, almost 50%. So I'm going to throw in a few scientific handfuls of rice hulls. And I'll be mashing today at 154 Fahrenheit, that is 68 Celsius. Now, Belgian wit, it's a wonderful style. It's multi-sweet and also has a citrus and spice character to it. Uh, you've probably had one or two yourselves. The most well-known examples, I think, are Allagash White and Hogarden Wit. Now, today's recipe comes courtesy, once again, of Mean Brews. I've featured them on the channel before. Go check out Matthew's channel. He has a ton of good content on there. And Matthew tells me that this recipe has won six different homebrew awards. So I think it's going to be quite good. I'm trying not to shoot every segment of these videos in my unfinished basement just for a little bit of visual variety. So as we talk about ingredients for no good reason, here's my game room. Yay. Okay, so this beer is going to have an original gravity of 10.52, about a 5% beer. Now I'm using as my base malt Belgian Pilsner malt, and that will make up 43% of the grist. Now this is a wit beer, so we need wheat. Uh, the wheat is coming in two forms. I'm using 24% each of Belgian wheat malt and flaked wheat. I've also got 6% of flaked oats in this recipe and 1% of Munich 1. I don't normally add 1% of anything, but hey, I'm just following Mean Brew's award-winning recipe. Now that gets us to 98% of the grist. The remaining 2% will be coming in the form of candy sugar. Hey, so Check this out, I've got this fancy new keg from Kegco. We'll take a look at that in a sec. But first of all, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my keg life cycle, I guess you'd call it. The way that I am cycling kegs through my brewery as I very rapidly go <laughs> through so many different styles. So first of all, a keg is filled with beer and it stays in here in my kegerator. Uh, when it is done though, it needs to go through a cleaning cycle. Now, typically after brew day is done, I will fill my kettle with PBW and leave it to soak overnight. Then the next day I will rinse out any of my used kegs and fill them oh, with a full five gallons of PBW and let them sit in here for a day or so. I'll then drain the kegs and then use this gadget, which gives me a jet of high pressured water to rinse out the residue from the keg. Then I'll store my kegs here under pressure. That way I'll know if 
there are any leaks or not. And that's basically it. Now, I do have a set of tools that I can use to open these kegs up and give them a more thorough clean, but that's basically what I do on a weekly basis with my kegs. Now, the folks at Kegco reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in taking a look at one of their kegs. I generally just use secondhand corny kegs um, or ball lock, and this is a, a ball lock five gallon corny keg as well. So let's take a look. It is a beautiful design. This looks so much nicer than my, uh, than my regular Pepsi corny kegs. On the top, you've got your standard in and out posts, ball lock posts came pressurized. And then just inside we've got a, a standard dip tube down to the bottom. So this is very much what you'd expect from a regular corny keg, except with this handle here at the top. Um, and I'm gonna be putting this to use with today's beer. Now, when it comes to adding the flavor profile with Belgian wit, there's a couple of ways you can go here. You can try and do it entirely through hops. I've seen some recipes that have really done that quite well, where you're just using sort of citrusy and hops with a little bit of earthy character to them as well. Um, I'm not doing that. So I'm only adding one hop addition, and that is SARS hops. These are super low alpha acid hops, and this will give me around 16 IBU of bitterness. This will go in at the start of the boil. Everything else is going to go in with five minutes to go. So I'm adding some candy sugar. I've got chamomile here as well. A sweet orange peel is gonna go in. And then I'm also adding coriander seed. This will give a sort of earthy and tart quality to the beer. And then I have seeds of paradise or paradise seed. Uh, and this is something you want to use sparingly. This will give the beer a bit of a peppery note as well as a bit of citrus flavor. Uh, me and Brew recommend one quarter of one ounce to go in. Also, I am going to be crushing up the sweet orange peel and the seeds of paradise. I'm gonna pitch my yeast. This is White Labs WLP410 Belgian Wit Ale 2. I'm gonna hook this up to my glycol chiller and look forward to tasting this one. I'm gonna make a bold prediction. I think with this being a Belgian beer, mm -hmm. which I like, and it being a wheat beer, mm -hmm. which you like, that we're both gonna enjoy this beer. Well, that's a good prediction. Let's figure that out, shall we? What do you think about the appearance of it, first of all? Um, it's very bubbly. Bubbly and cloudy, right? It's got that cloudy. wheat cloudiness to it. Yep. Looks inviting. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it smells fresh as well. What do you think about the aroma? A bit fruity. Yeah, just sort of a, a, a that's right, sort of a fresh fruity smell mm -hmm. to it. I think it looks good and smells good. So, all right, well, let's, see let's about the try taste. it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't expect it to taste like that. When I say like that, it kind of tastes, um, I was expecting like, like an orange peely kind mm -hmm. of taste, but actually it tastes a bit like very different but like either a bit of cinnamon or a bit of like coriander something like that Let's hold on all right i just had to go have a look at the recipe <laughs> okay see if you're right about that coriander because there's a lot in here okay so there is a fresh orange peel okay so i got orange peel which i think you got on the aroma already didn't you i, I smell a sweet yeah, yeah. Uh, there's also chamomile, okay, um, seeds of paradise, okay. and coriander seed. Okay, can definitely taste the coriander. Mm. 
but there is so much sort of sweet spiciness. Yeah, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit peppery. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is a bit peppery, so there, there is a reason for that too. Fruity. Is there pepper in it too? That's what the Seeds of Paradise are oh, adding okay. to it. But I think it's safe to say, I don't think any of the beers that we've done so far taste anything like this. No, not at all. It's very complex. Yeah. And if you want to get the recipe, it'll be down in the description. Uh, you can purchase it at Atlantic Brew Supply. And on that note, I think a big cheers. You're a pro at this. <laughs> I'm trying. Cheers. <laughs> cheers.